see it on, I can always look on, there's a roof over there by our house on the apartments, and you can see if anybody gets frost, they do on that roof. And there was a little bit. We had 29 when I got up, and I dropped down to 28 before sunrise. So we got a little bit, I was glad I brought my stuff in, but uh, hopefully that's the last one. But we're praying for our rain, and we'll see what happens. Any announcements? If you look on, your, on the back, you can see that we made our walk in Jerusalem, if you haven't noticed that already. Also, um, thanks for bringing the vegetables and the macaroni and cheese, and we'll keep bringing that. I think it's, we'll keep bringing it um, as long as we can until we reach our goal. Um, but we will begin in June on the, local food, or the food pantry for the kids, the uh, summer cafe. The National Day of Prayer is May 4th, so if you can come up to Markley Park in the evening, we'll have a time of national prayer. And then I put an announcement in here. We're having a ladies' evening gathering May 18th, oh, May 16th, at 6 p.m. at the Minneapolis United Methodist Church. So inviting any ladies that might want to bring a salad and a guest and come and join us for an evening of Fellowship and uh, spring cleaning of heart and soul is the topic for our little devotional afterwards. So come and join us. All right, any more announcements? Any birthdays or anniversaries? See, we don't even maybe put a, a diamond uh, box like we used to. We used to have a little church when we put money in. So we can get people to admit their birthdays. <coughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and we'll go on our worship. Um, 2074, shout to the Lord, and it is in your bulletin. No, right? the words. The chorus is in the faith we sing on 2074, but there is one verse and it's in the bulletin. So we'll sing the chorus first and then the verse. And then the chorus is how that works. <coughs> All right.
praise God in our hearts. So I'll give you a moment to get your mind wrapped around that thought and that truth. And also think of some things you're thankful for this morning. Think of what God has given you that you want to praise Him for. So let's get, take a moment to get our minds clear to things of this world and focus on the Lord, and then I will lead us in opening prayer. God, we praise your holy name and we thank you for your goodness to us. And I pray that you would help us to focus upon you and focus upon one another here and help one another as we worship you together. Guide us as we sing your songs and read your scriptures. I pray that they would um, indeed bring glory to your name, but also bring strength to our hearts and bring joy to our hearts. Guide us now, we pray, with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Your, um, the psalm that we have today is 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he is in marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness in the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre and the sound of the melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the, before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. Let's sing for joy as, and, and let's really uh, sing to God right now. This Psalm 2063, you are worthy. And it is written with a repeat, so we'll sing the first two lines and repeat those, and then we'll sing the second two lines, and then we'll repeat the second two lines. So, just want to give you a warning.
Isaiah 12, 2 through 6. Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With the joy, he will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, he will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. Make known among the nations that he has done, and proclaim his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud, and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Thank you so much, Janet, and you're having to do overtime since I don't have... Um, Tom is out preaching, and um, so anyone else would like to read, if you enjoy doing that as ministry, please... Help give Jenna a break, even though we'd love to have someone this good reading. Just imagine having a librarian and teacher, and, and also she served her time served driving a bus, so she's not just sitting around. She's got a voice that can make those kids sit down, which is pretty miraculous. <laughs> Try driving a bus sometime and make the kids sit down and see how that works. Our hymn of faith is Lamb of God. It's found in your faith. You see, what, 21... Uh, Imperishable, 
through the living and enduring word of God. One of those just little miracles, uh, that Psalm 9 of God came just before that, uh, script, scripture, and uh, so fully explains our salvation in the Lamb of God, and we didn't plan that, and it just happens that way, that God, and God's planning that worked out. So, thank you, God, uh, Gail, for listening to God when you come up with these. Um, it is a marvel that he loved us that much and was that innocent and, uh, and died for our sins. All right, do we have joys or concerns? Yes. Yeah, the Merle and Gail are heading to Wichita to pick up a daughter and granddaughter today. Yes, we are. Thank you. Yes, we got news last night. They, were, they landed in San Francisco, so they made it across the big pond. The <laughs> Pacific is a big, big pond. They went all the way from Singapore to San Francisco in one fell swoop. 17 hours. And this tells you how much my granddaughter and my daughter like to travel. So they've been on the, on the plane about 14 and a half hours already. So he said, yeah, Stella's doing fine, you know, just having a big time. And, and you know, visit with somebody next to him in the seat, you know. And, and I said, well, she asked how much farther it was, because she couldn't look, because she was holding Stella, she couldn't look at anything. And I said, well, it's about two and a half hours. She said, oh, good. She said, that's very doable. I thought, man, she's been there 15, I'm tired 15 hours a week. <laughs> just that. Uh, sitting on the plane. But anyway. Thankful for the, uh, the they made it safe this far, and pray sometimes the most dangerous places on the highway. So um, let's uh, <coughs> pray the thanks and uh, prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our praise and prayer. I'm thankful for the rain. We got enough to make things green up a little bit. We need some more, but it was a good down payment. Heard the, the chorus frogs in the pasture the other day without doing some things. Our bluebirds hash out some baby bluebirds and uh, they're feeding them. We get to see that. Um, it's just a, a beautiful time. So let's give thanks for the rain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our thanks and praise. Pray for. I, I'd like to pray for Eugene and uh, Veronica. And, uh, the Morrow family is, uh, Eugene's taking care of his dad, and his mom's helping there too, and his little sister. But um, I, he was mowing the yard yesterday, and he told me how much they're, they're struggling to make things work, to make, keep their dad happy, and, and keep, him, um, keep him going. He's struggling. So let's, let's pray for the Morgan family that they'll uh, be able to, to, to do well in this taking care of their, their dad and that everything will work well for them. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our prayers.
Let's pray. Well, God, we continue in our worship with you, and we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for all that you've done for us, and we thank you that all of, for everything you've done for our nation. We thank you for the abundance we enjoy. We thank you for those who are willing to lead our country, because we know we won't get anywhere unless we have good leadership. And I pray that you would bless those who have chosen to, to lead us in uh, our city and County, for those community leaders, I pray that you would bless them for their work. Provide for their needs and guide them as they guide us. We pray for those who lead us on the state and federal level. We pray that you would guide us as we elect those officials. For those who are appointed and those who uh, are in offices that we don't even know about, I pray that you would bless them and guide them. Guide us as we vote. I pray that you would help our nation be a nation that honors you. So guide our leaders and thank you for their service. We thank you for those who protect our borders and protect our nation. We thank you for those who serve in the military and border patrol. We pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy. Provide for them and their families. We pray for those who protect us locally, for the fire departments and the police and the law enforcement of all kinds and for those who work the utilities those who are EMTs and do emergency response, I pray that you would bless them all, keep them all safe and healthy, provide for everything that they need and help them to be able to safeguard us against the many perils we face. Thank you for those who raise our crops, for the farmers and ranchers and those who also truck the goods in and those who keep the machines going, I pray that you would continue to bless them for their work and provide for their needs and help them to be able to keep the supply running for us. Thank you for those who are teachers and staff that are willing to, to serve in, in that way at our schools. I pray that you would bless them for their work, keep them safe and healthy and provide for their needs and help them to meet all of the staff needs they have at their facilities and give them, a, a, give them a, that endurance these last few weeks of school. I pray for the students that you would keep them focused, that they may not just forget about uh, learning during this time of the year and be distracted, but focus upon what they need to learn and learn everything they need to be successful now and, and successful in the future. We pray for our hospitals. Thank you for those who are willing to serve. Thank you for those who uh, have daily contact with the patients. I pray that you would bless them for their work, help them to navigate through those regulations and help provide with the, for enough staff to take care of the patients. We pray that you bring healing to the patients and that they would um, find comfort and peace in your presence. Thank you for those who are willing to stand firm for their faith in Jesus Christ, even though they face persecution. For those who are imprisoned or tortured for their faith in Jesus Christ. I pray that you would give them that extra strength, provide for their needs, uh, provide for the needs of their family, help them to have the power they need to be able to reach others for Jesus, even during their terrible circumstances. Give them joy in the midst of their suffering and peace and, and endurance. Thank you for those who are willing to serve as missionaries. We pray that you would bless them, and especially those that are in difficult areas where they don't see much results. I pray that you would bless them for their work and provide for their needs. For those who are incarcerated, incarcerated in 
our nation. I pray that you would bless them. Speak to them, help them to be reconciled to you, to their families and to their communities. And now as we focus upon the prayer that you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll receive your offering. Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. 
So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we talked with us on the road and then opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Janet. And thank you, Gail, as always, for your planning. I forgot to mention our uh, theme for today is Open My Eyes. And how many times have you looked for something these days and you can't find it and it's right in front of you? Open My Eyes. Did you ever play games um, where you hide stuff and you want to try to put it in plain sight and get people supposed to see it. Well, that, I think that was, uh, they're supposed to, to look for it and sometimes they can't see it. And that was to prepare us for our adulthood when we're looking for things. But also there's something about that game that's pretty amazing is things can be wide open and you miss them. One of the TV programs showed, that was a teaching one, showed how they could do things backstage while the, the main characters are, are uh, up in front, and there will be something backstage, and if it's good enough, you won't even notice what's going on behind. And he proved that he, they had a, a, a person up speaking, and somebody in a monkey suit went back behind him and walked back behind the stage, and you didn't notice it until they replayed it and told you to watch for it. But it's pretty amazing that Things can happen and our eyes can be uh, closed to what's going on. We see that in politics, don't we? I'm reading Winston Churchill's biography about World War II, and, and it's about, also about Winston Churchill's uh, life before that, but how many things were happening and people didn't see it. I didn't realize how much Hitler was in the minority, I mean the minority of the minority, when he was trying to warn people about um, the takeover of, of, of uh, Europe by Hitler, and he, he dictated almost what was going to happen, and no one believed him. In fact, they, they had a minority of a minority that was going to sign a petition to, to try to increase armaments and, and uh, get ready for the takeover, and a bunch of people, well, ten people met, but nobody would sign the petition. So he was standing alone, and he was right which tells you a little bit about something uh, with majority rules. But it also tells you that we can see things, but it doesn't register. And sometimes we just don't see it, even though it's right there. Maybe some of you can, can walk down and look and open a motor and see exactly what's wrong with it and see what needs to be done. I can't. Maybe some of you can... Look at trees and tell you from a mile off what kind of tree it is. Look down the wheat row. I remember I used to ride with one of the farmers and he would, we plant the wheat. He said, oh yeah, it's coming up. I couldn't see a thing, but his eyes could see it because he was focused on those things. So, the world can be doing all kinds of things and we can have our eyes closed, either politically or in nature. But this is talking about spiritually speaking, that many times we don't open our eyes. We don't look around. We have, have to be willing to believe to open our eyes. But we also have to have our spiritual eyes open. And that's what we saw in this road to Emmaus. This is a, a famous story, and it's only found in Luke. Now, Luke was a historian, and uh, there's stories you will find in his gospel that you won't find in any of the other gospels. Because he went back and interviewed people and wrote down what they said. And this is kind of an, an off uh, 
the main course story, but it tells us a lot. First of all, the people were doing regular things um, when the resurrection took place. We read about all of the, the soldiers and we read about the kings, but we realize there's also regular people doing regular things. And these guys are walking down the road talking as um, was so common. And they were looking from kind of a layman's view of, of the things that were happening. These were not part of the 12 disciples. But then when Jesus appeared, they didn't realize who he was. And there are times when um, someone will appear to us in our daily lives that was sent by God. And sometimes we won't notice it. And then maybe when they're ready to go, we'll see that God has sent them into our lives. Um, the Hebrews tells us that God may send angels to visit us. And we we'll, won't we'll be aware of it. We'll, they won't just be glowing in the dark kind of angels. They'll just be regular messengers of God. That's what the word means, messenger of God. But I want to talk a little bit about this spiritual blindness that we have. Now, on the plane, it says planes on our mind, they, you, you can sometimes get those little blinders that they put on your eyes so you can sleep. Especially on a long flight like Shauna and Stella are on. Um, I don't think I would do Shauna any good with a busy little baby to have the blinders on. But for uh, some people, they can sleep with that on because it shuts out the light completely. There was a guy next to me, unfortunately he was in the aisle where we would be in the bathroom, but as soon as the plane started up, he put those blinders on, he went right to sleep. So if I needed to go up to go to the bathroom, I had to wake him up. I felt so bad. But as kids, uh, we used to play some games. Did you ever do that, Blind Man's Bluff? Couldn't have tell a donkey. It was always fun to see what it was like without the use of your eyesight. When I was a kid, we had a, a game we kind of invented. Do you remember the banana seats? When we were around when they came out. Well, we, those were the newest, greatest thing for us. And so we uh, put those on our bikes. So you have two people. You're not supposed, you weren't supposed to, but we did it all the time. Have two people riding on the bikes. Before you had to ride if they had a little carrier on the back. Uh, sometimes they had a little something to carry books. And we'd ride on that. And it's hard to keep your finger, your toes out of the spokes, but we did it anyway. But we would ride around town, and the guy in the back would put the blindfold on. And so you would go around, and he would explain the story. And sometimes they'd make stuff up and see if, you know, like we're going into a cave, and we'd go into somebody's garage, when people would come out and shoot us out. We'd be riding bike around there. Uh, Right up on a, we go through a breezy spot, we go through a dead still spot, and we try to describe it. You meet people, I think some of the guys were riding the bicycles and there was nobody there, but they just acted like they were talking to somebody. You couldn't really tell what was going on, you were riding, you had to trust them a little bit. Um, maybe you didn't grow up with mean kids, but some of us put to each other, like, uh, they jump off the bicycle while you're riding with the back, this and, and see what see what happens. But so he did all kinds of mean things, but uh, you trusted the person and you let try to be blindfolded. And we couldn't see what was going on, but uh, it was kind of an interesting experience because you, you had to keep your balance and you had to keep your your barefoot or had sandals on. You had to watch to make sure your toes didn't get uh, ate up on the on the ground or the asphalt. Um, but you were aware of your hearing picked up a little bit. But you still couldn't see what was going on. And sometimes through life, God is doing things in this world, and it's like we're going around with a blindfold on. It's not because we've purposely put the blindfold on. It's just that we aren't paying attention to what God is doing in this world. One of the things I'm trying to train myself to do is when I meet people to have a silent prayer for them. And um, 
and pray for the spiritual well-being. They may be Christians, they may not, but that somehow in our interaction we can get a little closer to God together. Somehow that I may be Christ's presence for them. Because God has sent us into the world to be those ambassadors. Not just to come to church on Sunday, not just to do a devotion. And I hope you're doing some kind of devotion every day. Reading the scriptures a little bit, using those daily breads. Because we need to have our eyes open. There's a whole world there of the spiritual world. And some of us aren't aware. I don't know how many of you watched the movie Matrix. But uh, in that movie, there was a whole world that was just in one per in people's minds. If they were just stationary beings hooked up to a machine and some kind of fluid being fed by a machine, but in their minds, impulses were sent in and it made an imaginary world. And the real world was completely different. And sometimes we get like that. Boy, it's easy to see. You see, you ever watch kids, how they get into those phones and stuff now, and, and games? I think a tornado could come through. Yeah. And if they were into that game, they wouldn't notice it. Because they get so locked onto it. That becomes their world. And I think a lot of the problems today are because they don't interact with the real world as much. I mean, certainly we used to get lost in books and lost in our games, but nothing, I think, like the way uh, our minds get wired to electronics. We don't have our eyes open to what's going on really in the world. And I feel like a lot of people don't get that if you don't work, no one's going to be there to make the food or to get the things to you. I think some people think they can just sit back and consume and not contribute. And the world will be just fine. Automation can go so far, but everybody really needs to pitch in. We need to pitch in and do something to keep the world going. But some people don't see that. All they see is their little world. <coughs> Spiritually, it has to be that way too. Spiritually, we have to be aware of the real world that's around us, not think of just this earth and its things as being eternal. Remember, Peter said that in that God of that reading we had out of the epistles. The epistles are the word, that's a spiritual word for letters. Uh, and so Peter had written this, this, this letter to the believers, and he said that what's going on in this world is perishable. It's going to disappear. Even though silver and gold seem like something that lasts forever. They find gold in the in these treasure hunts and in the bottom of the ocean. Silver maybe forms a crust, but it's still there. And we think of them as being lasting forever. But really, even by scientists' full, uh, research and scientists' discoveries, we, we know that uh, in their view, these things are going to disappear too. <coughs> that the world isn't going to just stay the same and, and has always been the same, that it changes and what we see now is going to disappear. The beautiful trees and everything we see that someday are, they're going to be gone. Both by the scientific view and also the spiritual view that you find in the Bible. But what is going to last forever is what you do spiritually. Our eyes are we're somewhat blinded. We're, we're like those... Um, have any of you done them? The real um, virtual reality goggles? You know is it, is it good? Is it, it got pretty good? The ones I saw were real blocky when I used to watch them, but it's pretty good. I mean, I'd love to go take vacations that way. Just think about how much you could save. Uh, um, especially when we get 15 hours on a plane. It should be nice just to, to end up there and see those goggles. But it's like we've got virtual reality goggles on. We have nothing to do with what's going on in the real world, but we can see this world that is temporal, and think that's all there is. Think of how many things that are going on that we don't, we can't see. The ultraviolet, the infrared, we can't see those, but I guess bugs can, um, bees can. What about the sound, the ultrasonic? Going around us, we can't hear it. 
As we get older, the ultrasonic doesn't have to go as high, does it? They did a little study with people who were getting older and had some younger people in the audience and had you raise your hands when you couldn't hear the, the tone anymore. And, uh, you know, when you got above 40, some people had to put their hands down. They couldn't hear it anymore. They kept going, you know, 30. There was even some sounds they couldn't hear. The 15 to 25 year olds, boy, they could hear everything. It's still going around, but we just can't hear it. There are things spiritually in this world that we can't see, but they're just as real, even though we can't see them. What about the radio waves? We didn't even know they existed before the invention of radio. X-rays. And now they do these CAT scans. I don't think I've ever had one of those, but I heard you have to be pretty patient for those. But they hear, they show things that are hidden. So it is with God and the Holy Spirit. They show hidden things within us that we can't see, except as we allow the power of God to do that. So let's allow the Holy Spirit to take this blinder off and to see the world as God wants us to see it. We see uh, people as temporal beings and sometimes we look at people as just things to be used by us. Sometimes we manipulate people to get the things we want. Sometimes we use people. But God wants us to see people as more than that. He wants us to love them even though they're not lovable. To forgive them even though they're not forgivable. In our hearts by ourselves. He wants us to take the blinders off and see them as spiritual beings that need to know about the God that loves them. So, let's take our blinders off. Sometimes we Maybe too much of reality may be a little too bad for us, so we just want to peek out because we don't want to see what the world really is. Also, the evil in the world, I suppose, as we become more spiritually well aware, we can see how much that we think is maybe all right is really subtle and evil. Let's let God be the, the, the one who determines what we can take and what we can't take. But seek him and ask him to open our eyes. Just like those guys walking on the street, there was Jesus walking on the road. There was Jesus right beside them. They didn't even see him because they were so caught up talking about Jesus that they didn't realize that that's who he was. But boy, when he taught them, it really lit up their hearts. When he opened their hearts, it was worth it. So let God who's present with us right now. Teach us. And as you spend a little time in devotions, let him set your hearts on fire. And let him teach you and comfort you and bring you all the good things that are eternal. And build in you something that will last forever. Amen. The closing hymn is found in your hymn book. 369, Lesser Assurance, verses 1 and 3.
Lord, may the power of the Holy Spirit go with us now and forevermore, we pray in Jesus' name.